everyone. My name is Otto, mm, not Angie. So I'm from Hong Kong. I am the design director and co-founder of Lab. LAAB Lab is a laboratory for the art and architecture. The two A's that we have has basically summarized the spectrum of work that we do, from art to architecture. And in our studio, we have a team of architects, designers, engineers, and makers who have been making all the design and construction work throughout the last five years. Hong Kong, to me, is an urban laboratory with the world's highest density of population. Hong Kong has been the experimental ground for many urban experiments. So in Hong Kong, we have a healthy economy, we have international culture, we also have a perfect infrastructural systems. But in the expenses of this life quality, we also facing a lot of challenges. And these urban challenges are very difficult that has pushed us as designer to really think outside the box. So among of all of these challenges, as you can see in this picture, the biggest challenge is to find the gap. There is no gap in this picture at all for us to design and build. So the, I'm going to talk about a number of urban challenges. Let's begin with finding the gap, finding the space for us to live in. Zooming into these photographs, it's actually very sad to see the aerial photo of the interior. This is the reality for many low-income families in Hong Kong who is living in this kind of shoebox housings, or we call it mosquito housings. So housing has been one of the greatest issues in Hong Kong, unresolved. As architects, we feel the responsibility to do some magic to help people living in a better environment. But we are not economists, we are not politicians, but the housing price is insane. So when the, worst, when the rest of the world is here, Hong Kong is there. So our housing is insanely unaffordable. Let's look at another graph by the economists. Housing price in terms of purchasing power, Hong Kong is also the top. Let's look at who is second. India is second. So we, have, uh, we share the same problem. As an architect, I have always been curious and interested in understanding space and what we can do to manipulate space. So let's say a space is always defined by the four walls around it. Walls are always static, but what if walls have AI? Walls have artificial intelligence that allows it to transform, that allows it to change in response to data, in response to signals. So with Warboss, a space can transform through time. A space can always be re reorganized for various types of activities in response to different conditions, in response to different activities. Form not only follows functions, because functions changes over time, form follows time. So many different types of configurations can be achievable by Warbus. Responding to various kinds of conditions, including the weather and the human activities. So what if Warbus can be even smarter? So, for example, if it's connected to your social network and your calendar, it will know that you have a party, a Bollywood party tonight. So they can also tell who are the friends invited, who are the friends that got blocked. So they can also understand who is coming, who will be the first person to arrive, and Warbox will prepare the space for you. So then I built this Warbox prototype at MIT. And this wall can stand and move on its own, but it also can move around as a collective, creating different types of space at different time of the day. Stop dreaming, back to the reality. 
what we can do with this situation. So at Lab, when we first started our company, we've been doing a lot of small housing projects. And these housing projects are not designed for low-income families, but in fact, they are actually designed for young professionals who have quite decent incomes. But all of these people have to live in very small space. So after working on a number of projects like these small spaces, we met Michelle and Andy, who are a smart and cheerful couple. And they told us that they want us to do the home design. So Andy told me he wants a big bathtub. Michelle loves cooking. So she wants a, an, an American-sized kitchen. And they always have house party, so they want a home cinema and a lot of other things. So we thought we finally got a big job to work on, a big house project to design. However, when they brought us to their apartment, <laughs> it's the smallest project that we have worked on. So um, we are people who love to take challenges, who love to find a gap for creativity and opportunities. Therefore, we take on the project while fulfilling their wishes. Here are the magic. Central is the heart of Hong Kong, really, and we couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Because we wanted to live in Central, um, we had to buy somewhere that was small. So our apartment is 309 square feet. Yeah. I wanted a large kitchen. I wanted a bathtub. I wanted a huge TV and a big home cinema. I wanted a bit of a gym, a lot of different things. We interviewed a number of different designers, but no one was able to do what we wanted until we found Lab. Imagine it's a 300 square feet apartment, and we have to fit an American-sized kitchen, a large bathtub, and a lot of storage, as well as a movie theater. We have to think beyond three-dimensional space. Then we engage the fourth dimension element, which is time. For example, the bathtub space is also a sofa space. It could also become a movie theater space, as well as a guest bathroom space uh, when the guests decide to stay overnight. So a lot of functions happening in a small space at different times of the day. It's my honor to see that our Warboss ideas of how to have form following time got realized in this small apartment projects. But more than that, we are happy to see their families living happily in the apartment. So wait, this apartment was not only designed for Michelle and Andy. Do you realize that they're actually a family of five? It's a very special project. We are not only designing for Michelle and Andy, but also the free cats, the Novi, Dum Dum, and Tositos. We want to design something that the cats likes, and then we design some very special elements, such as the cat wall, the cat ladder, and other special spaces. I was very impressed by the amount of thought they put into the cat runs and everything for the cats. It was obvious that they had done their research, spent a lot of time with cats, um, and the cats really love it. Our friends, I don't think they've ever seen such a high-tech house before. Um, and whenever people come over, it's always excitement and surprise about what we can do and what we have in such a small space. Cheers. 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 Cheers.
But more than that, it's also about how comfortable the whole thing is. People like coming over and spending time at our place. We actually had a friend come over and cook in our kitchen because it's better than his kitchen and his apartment's much bigger than ours. We thought that with the right design, with the right thinking, that small place could be as comfortable or more so than somewhere much bigger. Yes. We love it, yeah. <laughs> So one of our biggest achievements is to realize a small house like this. And the project got very widely publicized over the international media as well as going viral in Facebook. But more important to us is that we have made a difference in the design. The image here is the photo of their old kitchen in the same apartment. The space was too small that only Michelle can be barely fit into the kitchen while isolating her from Andy and his friends outside the kitchen. But with the new design, now they can have more uh, opportunities to cook together. They have more opportunities to interact. We are making the family kind of better. And if we are believing that family is the smallest unit of community in our society, we are contributing to fostering a better community. And you know what? Andy and Michelle are going to have a new baby next month. <laughs> so one of our main mission of lab is about fostering community. Living in a city like Hong Kong or Tokyo is super stressful. It's never easy. So we have created a series of art installations with the goal of having people brought together. So we want everyone to put down their cell phones, to talk to people, and to have physical interactions together. So between boys and girls, parents and kids, as well as the grandchildren and grannies. So this is a swing. Unlike a typical swing, you know, there, there are two diapers. You sit inside and there's a swing at the same direction. And the sun up there is very hot. So we created a swing where eight people can swing together face to face. So the location is considered with the, all the safety factors. And the canopy, the colorful canopy above it, gives the people a very comfortable environment under the sun. Infinite loop. It's a big slide. It's not a typical slide. The reason we call it an infinite loop is that we allow kids to run around, go up, climb up, and slide down. So we, like, we see uh, a lot of kids actually like going around in a loop, so we want to create an infinite loop for them. And it's also bigger than a typical slide, so that two people, such as a parent and a kid, can slide down together. So two people can slide together. And this is a hamster wheel for human. <laughs> so, you know, in Hong Kong, uh, it's very stressful. You have to work very hard every day. And here, you have to run very fast in order to get some cotton candies. So just like you have to work very hard to turn all your sweat into the sweet. And here, two persons can always run together as a team. We think it's always better to have two together. Next, we have transformed a courtyard in a creative hub into a colorful colorscape. So we use a kind of masking tape, a Japanese masking tape called MT tape, to tape the 10,000 square feet of courtyard space. We are also inspired by the tape road, so we create uh, a number of features, road-like features with mirror finish that we flat and make the space even more interactive. And we are very happy to see all kind of unexpected interactions we saw in the space. Last one was the interior project. It's a reading pavilion. 
We wanted to create an environment for people to read. Unlike most of the, you know, the bookstore in Hong Kong, they aim at selling the books. But we want to boost the sales by increasing, by making a better reading culture. So we create a space for people to read. So in this bookstore, we have adult area and kids area. In the kids area, the kids can play and read, play and read, allowing their parents have more time to read their books, to enjoy their readings. So all of these projects are pretty successful. A lot of friends told me that they spent a lot of time with the kids in this project. So when we conceptualize an artwork, we never want the artwork to be just a beautiful sculpture for you to look at and you have to stand behind a fence. We want you to go inside the artwork to have some interaction, not only with the work, but also with the people around you. So we hope to create art and architecture where strangers can become friends and friends can become families. Third subject is the urban nature. In Hong Kong, 75% of our lands are green areas. 25% are developed. However, out of the 75%, there is no way to build on it. And in that 25% of developed area, as you can see, between the harbor and the mountain, it's very dense. There is no gap for any public space. There is no gap for much nature. So urban nature is truly invaluable in Hong Kong. A lot of our public space are like this. It's very bare, green, it's very gray, it's a big concrete pavings, there is not much grassland, there is not many trees. So the idea of, from our team is whether we can make this space more colorful with the idea of looking through a toy from our childhood. This is a kaleidoscope, which allows you to see through the telescope and see the space in a colorful lens. So we recreated the effect with stainless steel mirror in hundreds of different colors, packed together, forming a kaleidoscope. In the kaleidoscope, we have different types of cells allowing the visitors, allowing the passerbys to put their heads inside where you can see the reflections of themselves as well as the reflections of the environment. So recently, we created an even larger Kalo Dome in Shanghai. What's interesting now is you can experience the interior of the Watunda, and when you look up, look at the top, look through the oculus to the sky, you may realize a very interesting moment it's a moment where our artificial man-made geometries becoming synchronizing with the nature geometries. So our geometry looks like tree branches. This is a moment where the man-made and the nature blend together. In a, re in a park that has recently transformed, it's a much nicer park. There are more greens, more areas for people to sit in. And we are commissioned to do something for the park. As a name here, we are asked to build a restroom in the park. It was the restroom before the renovation, and this is our restroom. So as you can see, the old restroom has the priority of keeping it as an enclosed space to protect the privacy of the people. But for us, more importantly, is to create an undisrupted experience from the park into the restrooms. Because this is not a typical restroom. This is not a typical public restroom. It's a public restroom in a park. It's the garden restroom. So we want to create an undisrupted garden experience even inside the restroom. So with the translucent skin made of fins and translucent glass, we create a spacious environment inside. We brought in the sunlight, we brought in some nature, and we also brought in something that you cannot tell from this image, which is the sound of nature. 
So the last subject that I am sharing today is urban waste. So I was very happy to hear from the conference yesterday that Curious is making an effort to reduce the amount of waste and to plant more trees to contribute to the environment. We wish to do the same in Hong Kong by understanding what we can do with the waste. So Obviously, there are a lot of waste in the urban environment. Every day, the citizens consume a lot of water bottles. And also, in Hong Kong, there are many festivals, adding the festival from the East, Chinese festival, and Western festival together. There are 30 festivals in Hong Kong, and many of them have beautiful decorations in public space. But these decorations usually only stay for a month or two weeks and they will be gone and trashed. So it's been a big problem of thinking what we can do to reduce the waste. And very ironically, in 2014, four years ago, we were asked by a shopping mall to design their Christmas decorations. So it was a time we feel very, um, di feel a dynamic of whether we can accept the job so our team has a proposal. We wish to use water bottles stacked together to create a Christmas tree. However, the result is really horrible. It looks so ugly. So, so we really hate to turn like trash rubbish into a design piece. It's very impossible. So then we think of the idea of whether we can actually transform these water bottles into these Christmas bottles. And you know, in China, everything is possible. <laughs> and we find a machine for it. Basically, the machine allows us to put the water bottles in. We shred the water bottles, just like your paper shredder, turn them into smaller particles, and then bind them together into any forms we want, such as a round-shaped water bottles. We began the campaign by calling it We Make Christmas. We make the Christmas with a recycling effort together. So it's a collective effort by the communities around the shopping mall. They can collect their own water bottles, the used ones, and put into cars like this. And then we use the water bottles to turn them into the Christmas bottles, also dyed with an environmental friendly paint. So so we want to create different types of installations. At the end, we created 10 different types of installations in the shopping mall area. In the atrium, we use uh, more than 10,000 of bubbles to create a teddy bear. So all the bubbles are suspended in the sky and create a teddy bear To illuminate the streets, we also produce uh, interactive art installations. 
that also use the water bubbles, also with the reflection of the mirror, is like creating multiple times of the thousands of water bubbles. So after the uh, dismantle, after the Christmas, we also upcycle these water bubbles again, and hoping that they can be turned into other, other use, such as uh, carpet or other products. That's the last project I'm showing today, the tea cafe. The tea here means transformation. It's a cafe in tea park, a transformation park. It's run by the government department called the Environmental Protection Department. So obviously, the goal of this cafe is to increase the awareness of people towards the environment to promote the education of sustainability. So we work closely with the client. We wanted to use uh, to create a cafe with the use of a material that is environmental friendly. So this department is very encouraging for us to implement our idea. And so we have started the project by trying to look at what kind of material is possible to create this cafe. You know, in Hong Kong, there is a lot of development happening because we don't have enough land. In this pink area, they are all the reclaimed lands from the sea. So we turned sea areas into land. And while turning these sea areas into land, we are, have to take down a lot of infrastructure, a lot of buildings along the sea coast. So for example, in this picture, you show that this is a new piece of reclaimed land right before the high rises. So inevitably, some of the architecture, such as a pier, has to be dismantled in, in this redevelopment project. But this pier has already served Hong Kong people for about 50 years. It was there before the time even we have subway connecting the two sides of the harbor. So a lot of people has a lot of memories with this harbor. In 2014, this harbor, this harbor pier was finally demolished, and the wood out of it has been immersed in the water for many years. So you can see that the lower part of the wood has been rotten, while the upper part of the fender wood has been intact because of its strength. So we know that this wood is very good wood. We are very happy that the landfill was also managed by the Environmental Protection Department, so we can save from the landfill and turn all of this wood into beautiful furniture on the right. So all of these, thank you. So as you can see, the wood has different parts and we also have different furniture. So the best part of the wood, the intact part, we turn them into a sculptural bench at the back with very smooth surface. The middle part, we turn them into the tables, the coffee table with the bookmark uh, design. The, my most favorite one was the cubes. We call these cubes the ocean cubes. We use resin, we use blue resin to cast and preserve the rotten part of the wood and made it into these beautiful ocean cubes. The idea is we want to bring back the wood back into the ocean water, back in the blue. It's a very good wood to put it in the sea for so many years to give you a wood to put it in the sea. This wood is very useful. The Human Rights Council will be removed from the 100-year-old wood to the 100-year-old wood. It's been removed for so many years. After the wood, the wood will be removed from the wood. The Human Rights Council found us in the wood to remove the wood to remove the wood to the wood. 设计成焕然一新嘅艺术品，一个码头木，岁月海水冲积，我哋好想保留木嘅表情，用透明树脂胶将佢风化咗去，用嘅海水蓝去做，将被捞上嚟嘅码头木挤翻落个海，我哋实验咗三个月，我见到好多瑕疵啦。
气孔啦，有好多裂痕啦。一开始都好在意，但系之后我哋觉得咁唔完美，有一啲意想唔到嘅美感喺里面。我哋喺呢批马头木嘅家私上面装咗啲充电器，再生嘅木俾到再生嘅能源大家咯。每一件作品里面。注入 T 拍，再生能源、新生命呢、这个主题。呢、这个世界，我哋太容易就去判断一啲嘢叫废，一唔能够满足到佢嗰个人嘅需要，嗰样嘢就系废嘅，嗰、那个人就系废嘅。好多嘢都有个可能性喺度嘅喎，点解有瑕疵我哋就要去揞咗佢啫？瑕疵都可以系一种特别嘅地方嚟噶。当下你觉得废嘅，转过另一个角度之后，你揾到新嘅价值都未定咧。Thank you. So we really have to thank、uh, the government and the department for allowing us to to turn all these、uh, wood into beautiful pieces of furniture. And for us, most importantly, the project is about preserving the collective memories of Hong Kong. So as a conclusion, we really believe the power of design. We think that the power of design is so powerful that it can transform space. It can transform waste, and it also can transform society. Thank you so much.